Welcome to Sick Flicks, where we take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to examine the goriest and most disturbing movies of all time. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're looking at Tamakichi Anaru's notorious tumbling doll of flesh, aka Nico Daruma, aka Psycho the Snuff Reels. Released in 1998, this infamous Japanese splatter short was the stuff of cult film legend outside of the land of the rising sun for years. I first saw it on a grainy, multi-generational bootleg with no subtitles way back in the early 2000s. The lack of English subs wasn't really a big deal, because let's face it, the story here isn't complicated, and the language of splatter is pretty much universal. However, back in 2017, Massacre Video gave Tumbling Doll of Flesh a legitimate DVD release, complete with English subtitles. While the film doesn't look great, which was by design to enhance the snuff film ambiance Tamakichi was trying to create, this is hands down the definitive release of the film. Building on the faux snuff foundation laid in the first two installments of the guinea pig series in the 1980s, Tamakichi not only pushes the envelope here, he rips it to shreds, lights the scraps on fire, and then pisses on the ashes. Niku Daruma features all the gore of Flower of Flesh and Blood, but then adds in hardcore sex alongside the violence. It's a genuinely disturbing experience, and definitely not for everyone. And probably really not for anyone, but hardcore gore hounds and aspiring serial killers, if we're being totally honest. Does Tumbling Doll of Flesh live up to its reputation as one of the most brutal splatter films ever made? We'll find out later when we score it on the gore card, but for now, let's break down the plot. The film opens with someone chowing down on some snacks while watching some grainy gore footage on a TV. Or, you know, just another Tuesday night here at Casa de Bracken. The phone's ringing, but it goes to the answering machine where the caller leaves a message about using a place for a shoot. They'll send a cleanup crew if the person watching the video brings the pills. This already sounds totally messed up. They're making scat videos, aren't they? No, not that kind of scat. The two girls one cup kind of scat. With everything set up, we cut to an exterior building at night. But the footage is intercut with images of a woman being tortured. If you guess this is what's coming and that the woman is our tumbling doll of flesh, well, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Man, this is gonna be some rough shit. Buckle up, kids. After that, it's time for this handy title card. Next, we meet Kana. She's doing an on-camera interview where she talks about dating men for money. It feels like the Japanese version of one of those old Ed Powers Dirty Debutantes vids from the 90s. How do I know about those? Um, someone might have told me about them once? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Dude, talk about truth in advertising. I don't know 20 people who've actually seen Tumbling Doll of Flesh, and I know a lot of weirdos. Videos based on customers' requests in Japan should be your first warning sign that you need to run away. I mean, best case scenario, you're probably putting live octopi and eels up your hoo-ha, crazy Japanese. The unseen director, often reported to be Tamakichi Anaru, but I can't confirm or deny the validity of that claim, runs through the details of the shoot. Gonzo style, multiple positions, no mention of interspecies intercourse with sea creatures or bodily dismemberment. Seems legit. <laughs> Once we start shooting, it'll be too late to stop. Okay, maybe it's not so legit. What, there's no safe word in this BDSM flick? After that, we're in a van, where we meet Kana's co-star, Kiku. Kiku's interview involves him getting a script, and I'm stunned there was a script for this thing. I can just basically imagine the first page. Fade in. Man holds woman down against her will and runs a potato peeler over her tongue. Fade out. Now that our leads are hired, it's time for... aimless shopping? Early on, it's easy to see why people might think Tumbling Doll of Flesh is real. Like August Underground, it captures enough mundane life footage to kind of lull you into thinking these are real people. But, like Guinea Pig, it has edits and music and other film techniques that give it away as a piece of twisted fiction long before we get to the gory special effects. With supplies obtained, they arrive at their shooting location. Then it's time to get down to the glamorous business of making adult cinema. 
The director goes over the shot list. Hmm, seems like a pretty standard porn setup so far. Missionary, doggy style, cowgirl, money shot. With everything ready to roll, Tumbling Doll of Flesh basically becomes a documentary on making a porno for a while. They do some foreplay, they cut for position changes, and so on. In typical Japanese fashion, they blur out all the pubic regions. Because, you know, dismembering a woman isn't any big deal, but pubic hair is disgusting. We're just going to skip past all that, because you can find your own porn on the internet, and I'm too lazy to blur out all the boobs. You're here for the gore anyway. Just as things are about to wrap up, one of the cameramen hands Kiku what they call a Giji, which is basically a packet of tartar sauce he can squirt to add lots of fake ejaculate to the money shot. Man, is anything real in porn? Fake boobs, fake asses, fake money shots. I'm so disillusioned. Next, you'll tell me that all these movies where the cable guy is met at the door by a horny naked woman aren't real either. That night, there's more mundane stuff. Lobster for dinner, small talk about the shoot the next day. It all looks pretty relaxed. That relaxed vibe carries over to the next morning, which starts with some shots of these cats who are like, we're getting the hell out of here. We want no part of all the messed up shit that's about to go down. After that, shit starts getting real. They set up Kana and some Japanese rope bondage on a bed with a tarp under it. Rule number one, a tarp under the bed of a video shoot is never a good sign. Kana doesn't like it when things start escalating. She's clearly not a fan of the hot wax, the whip, or the butt play. And she begs for them to stop. But they're not stopping. No means no, fellas, even on the set of a fake snuff film. The frustrated director decides things aren't working because Kana doesn't look like she's enjoying any of this. Whoever commissioned this video wants you to look like you're having the time of your life while getting hot wax dripped on your butt. When the enema portion of the video fails to work out, and yeah, I just said the enema portion of the video, the director tries to convince her to keep going, but it's no sale for Kana. There's more pressure to perform, but she keeps refusing. The director decides he's going to force her to do it anyway. What a guy. He doesn't, and it looks like things are calming down when they decide to untie Kana and take a break. Here, they discuss the logistics of their shoot. <laughs> the anima fetish audience isn't going to be happy with this footage, which makes sense since they don't just watch any old shit. The director then tells Kana she can leave, but since there are no cabs in the area, he'll take her to the train station. But it's all a ruse. As she prepares to leave, the director goes and channels his inner Babe Ruth and bashes her in the head with a baseball bat and then drags her back to the set. Hmm, I might have hit her too hard. I was just trying for a single, wound up cranking this one right out of the park. The crew tries to stop the bleeding by turning her into the Japanese version of the mummy. Then they put her on the bed. She's unconscious, so she'll probably complain less. And will the fetish audience even notice? Maybe there's a whole new market here. Then, because sexually assaulting an unconscious woman isn't enough, the director breaks out the chopping board and lops off her foot. The decision here to cover the fake foot with a stocking was a good one, as a regular fake foot would have been pretty obvious. He's not done though, he's gonna chop off that whole leg. Guess after this she can change her name to Peg. And then we come to what is arguably Tumbling Doll of Flesh's most infamous scene. To quiet her screams, the director starts pulling her tongue out and going at it with a potato peeler. Clearly this is why he failed out of dental school. That's not how you perform a tongue scraping. Honestly, this effect is not particularly convincing, but it still works because everyone has bitten their tongue at one point or another and can sort of imagine how this would feel. It's not over yet though. There's still time for the garden shears. Lucio Fulci is known for brutal eye violence, but Tamakichi Anaru is the unofficial king of brutal tongue violence. With lots of good footage caught on camera, and afraid that Kana may already be well on the way to being dead, they discuss shutting the shoot down. They ultimately decide to keep filming, and in a sort of nod to guinea pig, flower of flesh and blood, they try to keep her alive and aware as they dismember her slowly. Man, starring in this movie has cost Kana an arm and a leg. And a tongue. Then, in a macabre bit of humor, the director makes her rub her own head with her severed arm. I guess he probably could have stuck at worse places, all things considered. If you're wondering where Kiku is during all of this, he's off passed out or taking a nap or something. Maybe it's shock. Or maybe he's done so many of these films he's just sort of bored now. Wake me up when it's time for the grand finale, guys. Eventually, they do wake him up. He's tasked with amputating Kana's other leg, which he does with some reluctance. 
God damn, I told you guys this movie was fucked up. But it's about to get more fucked, literally and figuratively. They cut a slit in Kana's stomach and force Kiku to have his way with it. Now that's what I call a gutsy performance. No one offers him one of those tartar sauce packets when he finishes this time. That has to be a wrap, right? Not so fast. If you thought these guys were just misogynists who hated women, guess again. Because while Kiku's basking in the warm afterglow of his gruesome money shot, the director bashes him in the head too. With Kiku passed out, he turns his attention back to Kana. He tells her she can't die yet because there's more work to be done. Then he beats her in the face with a cleaver. I'm no doctor, but that's probably not going to help keep her alive. It's pretty tough to work with a cleaver wedged in your face. With Kana in bad shape, they focus on Kiku. He gets castrated. And it's really weird because you can't see anything. The Japanese blur out genitals in their porn, so all you see is a block of pixels. Maybe that's for the best, though. I mean, I had to watch a guy get his junk chopped off in Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals last week, so maybe I've earned a break when it comes to penis amputations. Anyway, with that done, the director leaves his assistant to get the rest of the B-roll footage, which is basically just shots of the two dismembered stars, who are both somehow still breathing. After that, we watch the director make a call so the cleanup crew can come in. Then fade to credits. And that, my fellow gorehounds, is Tumbling Doll of Flesh, aka Niku Daruma, aka Psycho the Snuff Reels. After watching films like this and Flower of Flesh and Blood, it's easy to see why the Japanese were widely regarded as the kings of messed up movies for quite a few years. The Eroguro subgenre, which stands for erotic grotesque, features some truly disturbing films. And while I'm not 100% sure that Tumbling Doll of Flesh falls into the Iroguro category, that's really an academic debate for another day. I think at this point we can all just agree that this is one really sick flick. But how sick is it? Let's find out. Scored on the gore card. Normally this is where we'd break down all the gross stuff I saw in the movie. But before we get to that, I'm adding a special news score for this film. How many federal, state, and local law enforcement watch lists will you land on if you order this movie online? 5. The guys from Mindhunter are probably staking out my house convinced I'm a serial killer in the making as we speak. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way. In terms of gross anatomy, Tumbling Doll of Flesh is an overachiever. While we only have two victims, both bodies take a real beating by the time things are over and done with. We've got a baseball bat to the head, multiple limb amputations, two counts of brutal tongue violence, a castration, and a meat cleaver to the face. For a film that runs for just over an hour, that's a lot of carnage in a short amount of time. Tamakichi and Aru provided many of the film's special effects, and while they're obviously effects, they've aged well. No one's turned this thing over to the feds thinking it's real, but that doesn't diminish the quality of the gore one bit. And it's with that in mind that I'm giving Tumbling Doll of Flesh the coveted 5 barf bags out of 5 rating. If you looked up Sick Flick in the dictionary, you'd find a picture of this movie. It's gory, it's disturbing, and it's definitely not something most of you will ever want to watch. These Japanese AV gore fests aren't for everyone, which is why I'm here to watch them for you. Have you seen Tumbling Doll of Flesh? If so, let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. And while you're down there, why not like this video and subscribe to the channel? I've got a lot more Japanese insanity to share with you in the weeks and months ahead, and you wouldn't want to miss that, would you? Of course you wouldn't. Oh, and check out some of my other videos. You'll find links to more sick flicks here on the screen. I make this stuff so you can binge it, so go be a glutton. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.